Hi there, Emily Midget here with you today sharing my latest installment of the Exploring with Emily series. This month I'm sharing some tips on how to color a white flower using the new Mondo Amaryllis stamp set from this month's Essentials by Ellen release. Adding color and shadows to white objects can be tricky, but I have a few simple tricks to help you achieve a white image. Let's get started with the details. For today's project, I have stamped the Mondo Amaryllis stamp on some white Copic friendly cardstock using Hero Arts Intense Black ink. I also have stamped the same image using some Inka Dinka Doo masking paper. I will be using Altenew's Azurite ink as well as some lime green and warm gray Copic markers for some subtle shadows. To start, I want to create some contrast by blending a vivid, concentrated color around the edges of the stamped flower image. This contrast will help to ensure that I don't get too intense with my Copic coloring. I have a tendency to saturate my colored images with lots of vibrant color, and so to ensure some subtlety, I will rely on the bright blue halo from the Azurite ink to bring out that contrast of the white flower and the blue background. I fussy cut the floral image right up to the edge of the image rather than use the dye because I wanted to ensure that the ink blending got right up against the edge of the image on my card. I used the Picket Fence Studios Life Changing Blender brushes here for some beautiful quick blending. Once the mask had been removed, I placed it on the stamp packaging to be used again. For today's image, I looked up Amaryllis photos on Google and found that they come in a huge variety of colors, including white with lime green accents. I'm just going to add a touch of YG21 to the centers of the flowers, then use YG21, YG00, and YG0000 on the very edges of the petals. The lightest shade of this trio is almost clear, and it's a great shade for transitioning from the green of the petal tips to the white of the flower petal. I'm not being terribly fussy with the shading, just trying to get a decent blend, but the colors are so light to begin with that they don't need much help to create a smooth blend to white. After I'd added the little lime green edges to the flower petals, I used Copic's W3, W0, W00, and the Colorless Blender to add some shadows and depth to the white flower. I like to try to keep these colors as light as possible, concentrating the darkest shade only where the petals overlap to allow the majority of the flower petal to remain the true white of the cardstock itself. I use the lines drawn on the stamped image itself as a guide for some of the shadows, imagining them to be folds of the petals and therefore adding shape to the petal itself. Adding some shading to the center of the flower petal can add a bit of extra curve to the petal, rather than allowing it to remain somewhat flat white. No need to spend an age shading this white image when the contrast of the bright blue with the white petals does the work for you.
Once I had finished adding the warm gray shadows to the white petals, I used G07, YG09, YG07, and YG05 to create some bright lime green foliage for the stalk and the leaves. I used the three lightest shades first, then added a second layer using the G07 in the most intense spots. Finally, adding a few touches of W3 marker to add some additional shadows to the areas that overlapped the most. Once I had finished coloring the image in its entirety, I decided to add some artsy splatters to my blue background. I replaced the previously used mask on the now colored image. I then dipped my wet paintbrush in some Hero Arts white liquid watercolors and splattered the opaque white paint over the background. Once the background had enough splatters to give it a little texture, I removed the mask from the still pristine Copic colored amaryllis. I hope this video has inspired you to use some masking to help simplify your white coloring by adding some extra contrast. The bright background truly does do most of the shading work for you. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up and head over to the Ellen Hudson blog for all of the details on the products used. Thanks so much for watching and have a marvelous day.